Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, second One Key Idea session, this time on the Foundation 2018 syllabus. Those of you who are uh, uh, joining me for the second time, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who uh, didn't make the first uh, webinar and want to catch up on that later, uh, we'll be posting the recording of that as usual, along with the recording of this one for those who uh, uh, may miss this one. Um, you may want to let people know if you think it was valuable that uh, the recording will be posted on the RBCS YouTube channel. Uh, I am Rex Black, uh, president of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, we have delivered insight and confidence to hundreds of clients around the world. Our team of international consultants deliver customized training, consulting, and expert services to companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. Uh, an additional thing to mention relevant to this presentation is that uh, above and beyond my work as president of RBCS, I've done a, a lot of volunteer work for the ISTQB over the last oh, 15 or so years. And um, most recently, I was the uh, project manager and uh, technical editor for the Foundation 2018 Syllabus Project. And that's what we're going to look at today uh, in this uh, bonus webinar. So the motivation behind the update to the syllabus, for those of you who are like, hey, you know, uh, the syllabus seemed fine. Uh, so what was, what was the need to update? Well, typically, um, ISDQB syllabi are on a five-year update cycle. And so the 2011 syllabus, which was the, the previous version, was really due for an update in 2016. Though, if you want to get literal about it, the 2011 update was done entirely to resolve a formatting problem where literally a, a numbered list of steps in a process got misnumbered. And so that was just the 2010 syllabus with the numbering problem fixed. Um, so. Actually, it was due for an update in 2015, and uh, we, um, we we had noticed that you know the syllabus there was a lot of material in the 2011 syllabus that could have been written in 2005, and in some cases material that could have been written in 1995. So we wanted to really reflect the current state of software testing and uh, some of the more modern software development uh, methods and and uh, software technology. So we in the new uh, syllabus, you'll find discussions about how Agile affects certain uh, testing best practices, how uh, uh, delivery pipelines um, are um, uh, associated with, with testing and quality practices, uh, what shift left is about and why testing is so critical to that. Um, as, as I mentioned, Internet of Things is a new technology. There are other new technologies that are mentioned, the uh, importance of non-functional types of tests, and also just an overall attempt to get um, uh, more uh, focused on, on practical application of the theory. So there's some of the, uh, so there's basically a beefing up of the, the K3 learning objectives, the application learning objectives for the most part, um, which, um, you know, will, uh, we think improve the practicality. Now, for those of you who've taken an RBCS foundation course, you're wondering like, well, what do you mean improve the practicality? Well, for us, I don't really anticipate there to be a whole lot of change. Our, our training course, our foundation training course has always been heavily focused on practical application and um, doing exercises and so forth. Um, so um, we, we think that our, our course will be unchanged by that, but we will be reflecting in our in our course uh, some of the more modern uh, methods and um, technologies and current state of software testing in our slides. Again, from a presentation point of view, with our foundation, we've always presented it uh, presented the best practices in terms of how they apply to current technologies, current methods, and so forth. So, presentation won't necessarily change much for our course, but the uh, um, the syllabus contents that's, that's quoted in the course will be updated. 
So it was quite a lot of work getting this update out. You can find the syllabus on the um, ISTQB website, download it from there, um, along with other supporting um, parts of the package, such as uh, sample um, exams and uh, um, some background on the changes that were made um, going learning objective by learning objective to make sure that it's clear what changes were made. And, um, but to focus on the process first before we get into the specific changes, um, we um, went through a, well, we had the, we had the material in an alpha form uh, towards the end of last year, and we went through a series of alpha reviews. There were two alpha reviews. There was what we call a cross review, which was to look at the um, alignment between the ISTQB foundation syllabus and the other ISTQB syllabi, and also the glossary. And that turned out to be one of the really valuable, probably the most valuable parts of this project um, to me. Uh, it, it, uh, a lot of issues that, that can be really kind of irritating in, in the syllabi, these inconsistencies got found and resolved. And then we had a beta review where we opened it up to a wider range of participants, including a lot of accredited training providers. Um, so across all those reviews, uh, that generated 5,400 comments um, from over 140 reviewers. Now, I have been involved in probably 10 plus syllabus development and or maintenance efforts. And I've, I've not ever seen anything like that volume of comments or that number of reviewers. If you download the syllabus and just look at the, the acknowledgments page and, and how many reviewers there are for this version and compare that to previous versions, you'll see it's like, wow, there's a lot more people. So yeah, I would say more than double the amount of comments I've seen on any previous syllabus and, and certainly more than double the number of reviewers. So lots of, um, lots of input. Uh, from people around the world in these review teams. Um, another thing that we did was we applied the um, timing uh, calculations that we use for all of our syllabi. We applied that to the, the chapter timing so for the first time for the foundation. Um, the old foundation syllabus had these timings that were sort of arbitrarily assigned and traced back to the um, well, probably the, the, the late 1990s version of the syllabus. So this, I think, is more much more realistic uh, from a timing point of view. Um, and so uh, a week ago, um, last Monday, uh, the full package came out. Uh, the vote was successfully completed at the end of May. And uh, that was something that I had committed to when I was brought on as the project manager. I said, OK, I promise you guys I'll have this done uh, by the by the end of May and um, and uh, we hit that target no small amount of work though I think I I probably processed about uh, 3,500 or so of those 5,400 comments uh, the working group chair Klaus uh, Olson uh, processed most of the uh, remaining questions uh, the vice chair Tahita uh, did a few of the uh, uh, comments as well but I mean, you can imagine going through 5,400 comments and four rounds of reviews. Um, that's that's a lot of input, and there was a lot of uh, discussion that went with it. But out of all that hard work came uh, what I think is a is a pretty solid package. So, looking at um, what the changes were in a little more detail, um, as I said, we wanted to bring the syllabus up to date, uh, really throughout, in terms of things like shift left and Agile development and DevOps and uh, CI/CD and continuous deployment, delivery pipelines, those sort of things. So that's really uh, that was something that I worked on pretty systemically. Um, made changes to all the uh, sections to to make sure that they were reflective of that. Um, for those of you who who care about reference standards, or at least are or maybe those of you who are tired of the old, worn out IEEE 829. Uh, 1998 standard, which was referred to before, um, the syllabus is now up to date with more recent standards. Again, for those of you who care about that, most of our clients don't really care much about reference standards. Now, the inconsistencies. Um, one of the things, if you study the 2011 syllabus, and especially if you line it up against, say, some of the other um, 
ISDQB syllabi are lined up against the glossary, you're like, hmm, you know, that's not really quite right. And even within the syllabus itself, 2011 syllabus, there's overlap and inconsistency. So like there's a discussion about test process um, in chapter one, section four of the 2011 syllabus, and then chapter four, section one, talks about test development process, and that material is not entirely consistent. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's just nagging. And then there were issues, as I said, with um, terminology and so forth. So we went through, as I said, in that cross review and really spent a whole lot of time getting that stuff cleaned up. So um, I'm really happy with that because as, as a guy that spends a lot of time kind of crawling around in the various syllabi as part of doing training efforts, you know, it's it's frustrating when you bump into these things, you're like, you know, here's a, here's a bug, basically, an inconsistency, you know, so it's good to see those go away. We made a major change to the testing process, Chapter 1, Section 4, made it a lot less prescriptive and a better fit for the, um, the Agile and other types of modern development methods. Um, before, it wasn't that it didn't fit if you weren't following a sequential life cycle, but it was one of those things that always had to be explained. It's like, okay, well, here's how this works if you're not following a sequential life cycle, like a waterfall. So now it's less it's less prescriptive and it's it's a better fit for um, for Agile and for Kanban, uh, Scrum, um, continuous deployment, etc. Now, test levels and test types and the relationship between those is an ongoing source of confusion in the testing world. So one of the things that we did was uh, make this more clear. So that section, that's uh, chapter two, sections two and three is, is much better. Um, the material in section one, chapter two, section one, that has to do with uh, testing in the development life cycle um, really uh, is, is significantly updated as well in terms of, of methods. Uh, really, chapter two is almost completely rewritten, I would say, um, and to, to a great improvement. Chapter three, the discussion on static testing was streamlined by eliminating redundancies, basically combining section three into section one. So now there's just two sections in there. And part of the streamlining uh, of the learning objectives and the material created space for an exercise. Uh, so there's a K3 learning objective for reviews. Now, again, this is something we've always had in our RBCS foundation training. So this won't affect you at all. Uh, for those of you who've taken the RBCS course or are planning on taking it in the future, which we've always been highly practical and always had exercises uh, associated with reviews. The material in chapter four on the black box and experience-based test design techniques was really pretty skimpy, uh, especially the black box material. You know, in 20, the 2011 version, if you look at it, it's like it's one of the shortest sections in the syllabus, but at the same time, it's one of the most important things and it's one of the, it's the section with the most exam questions written against it. So it really didn't make a lot of sense. So that those uh, explanations have been beefed up. Now, at the same time, the white box material has been tuned to be more about helping people understand um, what code coverage concepts mean and less about spending time fiddling around with code trying to um, understand the, the, well, not understand, but apply these concepts to directly to a, a piece of code. This was always something that people got a little bit frustrated with of uh, having to go through and, and work with code. So we've, uh, uh, that's been changed. So there's now the focus is, as I said, on understanding uh, white box coverage techniques, not uh, playing around with code. And just overall and throughout, the learning objectives were tightened up. The text was, was way tightened up and refined. Um, so the material is a lot clearer and it's going to be easier to write exam questions against it. And also if you're taking the exam, it's gonna be easier, I think, to understand the material for purposes of taking the exam. So just overall, you know, throughout the whole document, there was this focus on, on let's, you know, let's tighten it up. Let's, let's express ourselves more clearly. I mean, I think if you did a, if you were to have a change tracked version, a word change track version that compared the 2011 text against the 2018 text, pretty much all of the text has been changed uh, 
but the topics are very similar um, or identical in many cases. And the learning objectives are, you know, just slightly changed really um, just to make them more um, comprehensible. Uh, the uh, redundant learning objectives were removed, which is, is great because that, again, that makes, uh, makes the material tighter and the exam uh, more coherent and predictable. Oops. Okay, so we'll put the advertisement up here as, uh, as we always do um, as we go into the Q&A here. Uh, I got a question from Matt who says, are there any requirements to become part of a syllabus reviewer, contribute to ISTQB, et cetera? Um, so um, what, what, if, if, if any of you out there listening are like, gee, how do I get involved in doing this? And you feel like you've got the time to do it. And that's important because, you know, don't, don't get involved as a volunteer and then um, not do the work. Okay, we I've had some frustrations with that on, on leading working groups where people want to get their name on the on the working group and then they they don't do a lot of the work. But then the one thing that they are they definitely make sure of is that their name appears as a as a author or reviewer in the credits, which I, I don't like that. So if you're if what you're trying to do is get your name on the credits list, uh, you know, no, not unless you're willing to do the work. But if you are willing to do the work, you need to approach your um, National board, whatever wherever you live, go to your national board, approach them, and um, say that you're uh, you're available to volunteer. Um, another question from Matt: Who? Uh, what does the exam cost? Um, well, the exams have different prices around the world. Um, if your question is, you say same as the old one. Um, so if if your question is about does it is it going to change? It really shouldn't change as a part of this update. Um, but uh, the, the exam prices do vary worldwide. Um, you know, go, go to uh, your local exam providers um, and, um, and check, your, um, check your pricing. Um, speaking of exams, uh, one of the things that I uh, found out last week um, after the um, exam, uh, after the, uh, the syllabus was released on Monday, that um, ISKI, uh, is exam, a, a worldwide exam provider, uh, does have the 2018 exams. Um, so you can take those um, and, uh, uh, right away. And we, we are updating our training class uh, this month. We will have it ready to support 2018 exams. It was still the accreditation will be outstanding, but uh, uh, the... Uh, material itself will be for the most part updated updated enough that it will be focused on the 2011 syllabus so if you're wanting to schedule a course and take a course in july and take the exam uh, uh, that's that's all available to you so uh, you can uh, you can move into the 2018 uh, um, certification world uh, right now um so i got a, a Another question from Madhu here. How do I approach the board? Um, email to uh, the national board. Yeah, you're going to need to go to your your national board website and figure out what the right way is to contact them, um, and and then and then you know send an email to them. I would guess or call them. Um, I'm not um, affiliated with the ASTQB anymore. I'm a I'm a free agent. Um, and so, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to provide any sort of insight into uh, what the current process is. Um, but uh, certainly each national board has ways to contact them. So get in touch with them and volunteer. But again, only if you're ready to uh, uh, do the work. Uh, I got a question from Ivana. Hi, Rex. Will there be a change in the syllabus for the advanced levels? Ah, okay, good, good question. Um, so one of the things that we did um, was this cross review where we checked for alignment between the, uh, the new Foundation 2018 syllabus and the existing other syllabi. Now, of course, in some cases, we found out that 
what was in the 2018 syllabus is right and more up to date and what is in the existing other syllabi is outdated and or wrong. So in that case, we obviously we did not align the 2018 syllabus with the existing content that was wrong because that would like, make no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So what we've done is that there have been notations made in the um, notes that we took um, as we made the changes of where the advanced syllabi will be updated to better align with the new foundation syllabus. So yeah, that will be that will be happening. So if you were to notice any sort of consistency issues between the the new foundation syllabus and the advanced syllabus or advanced syllabi, any of them, just rest assured that those are known issues. They are scheduled to be resolved. The 2018 content is is the more modern and correct content. Uh, I worked very closely with the uh, the appropriate uh, working group chairs to uh, identify those particular issues. Okay, so um, seeing as there don't appear to be other questions, I guess I uh, uh, gave you guys a relatively complete rundown. I hope you're you're happy with uh, this quick intro. Um, if you want more information, I'd say go to the ISTQB website, download the syllabus, and really download the entire package, including the uh, release notes, which will give you a better idea of the specific changes uh, on a learning objective by learning objective uh, level. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this free webinar from RBCS. Uh, we do these free webinars as a service to the software testing community because at RBCS, we are a not just for profit company. That said, if you enjoy our free webinars and feel that they demonstrate solid insights into the kinds of testing challenges you face, please make RBCS your preferred software testing vendor for any and all expert services, consulting, or training. We're happy to provide a quote for any such help you might need. Contact us at info at rbcs-us.com. That's info at rbcs-us.com. And I uh, look forward to hearing from you. And I look forward to seeing you next month when we come back for the July webinar. July, at this point, will probably not be a two-for webinar like today was. But, hey, who knows? Up until just about a week ago, we weren't planning on doing a second One Key Idea webinar today. And we went ahead and did it. So we're wacky that way. Uh, we'll uh, uh, see you uh, in via emails or uh, on the... Uh, uh, next webinar. Thanks.